Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening, and today we're going to be talking about roots, especially on kale plants. I was always wondering, how can a kale plant get nutrients from its roots in the ground when it doesn't use any type of mycorrhizal fungi, when it doesn't either use the endo or the ecto mycorrhizal fungi? So I'm going to try to find out. So here I have a list of all the plants that use mycorrhizal fungi, the two different types. We have endo and ecto. And down below here, let me get a better shot for you, we have our brassica family, which doesn't use anything at all. And now you'll see here that we have kale underneath the brassica family, just like your broccoli, your cabbage, your cauliflower, and your collards. So in turn, also you can look at it this way. If we have 95% of the plants on this planet using some type of mycorrhizal fungi, the endo or the ecto, where does that come into play? Not so much the brassica. Say we, this was a tomato plant. We start that inside our trays in the house ahead of time because we want to have plant starts to put outside later on to get a jump on the season. Now we know that the soil food web is not working here. We know nutrients are being delivered from the worm castings on top, and also this is leaf mold down here, that we are getting some nutrients there. So how is this plant surviving if outside when we put it in the garden that we don't use, uh, it's not being used already by mycorrhizal fungi to help benefit the plant? So something has to be going on ahead of time to make that plant healthy, especially when it's in its small stage. So to clarify, this is the whole soil food web. We might just have the bacteria in there, but we do not have the mycorrhizal fungi growing on the brassica. Now I know it doesn't need it, but let's say this is a tomato plant again. There's probably very little chance, a very high probability, that there is not mycorrhizal fungi spores in this products that I have used, the leaf mold or the worm castings. So plants that we grow indoor, whether it's house plants or uh, transplants or seed starts, anything inside the house is not going to be using the whole soil food web. In general, whenever you start plants inside the house, you're only going to rely on the nutrients in the soil, very small nutrients that are available in the water for it to take up to the plant to supply nutrients to that plant. Now, so we want to find out what's going on the roots. So I'm going to take this and just place it in the water here and let it soak so we can easily remove the roots from the worm castings and the leaf mold. And then we're going to look underneath the microscope to find out what's going on. So now we've had it soaking for about 15 minutes. And let's take it out. Quite a long root here. Now this is our root from our kale plant. Now you can see here, I'm going to say it's about seven to eight inches long. And the plant, I started the seeds about um, a month ago, uh, last month in February on the 15th. Now we have our sample underneath the microscope. Now we just have to turn it on and we can view on the computer. So here we have our root. Now let's focus in on this, if I can. It's not that good of a picture. But you can see, now what we're looking for is, through my research, I found out, and I don't know if this is it right here or not, these are root hairs. Now, they might be pushed against the root, and I'm hitting the microscope, it's very touchy here. But I'm just going to put a drop of water on this and see if I can activate it a little bit. And we can get a better picture here. So here's a better picture. We put a little bit of water on there and you can see the root a lot better. Now, this is only at 100 magnification. I'm going to go to, I got a new lens, we're going to go to 400. So this is what I'm looking for right here. Now this, what we're seeing, if I can get a better view here for you, it's ever so minute. This is a root hair. And what it does, it does not uh, help the plant with photosynthesis. Basically what it does, it's a pure root and meaning is it has no other job except to bring in 
nutrients and water to the plant. That's its only purpose. Now, the only part that it grows on in the whole root that you saw is towards the root tip down here, the very end. Now, they start way up at the top and grow down and they'll die off. Every two to three weeks, they will die off and produce more root hairs. Now, root hairs is almost like hairs on your arm. It's that many towards the tip of the plant. Now, when the water goes by and nutrients go by, this excretes an acid and grabs onto those nutrients and pulls it in through an, uh, an ion exchange and brings it into the root and then delivers it to the plant. Now, the main root here is your storage tank, your storage unit of nutrients. Now, this root hair here, here that I'm losing the viewing on here will reach out much further. What it has happened is when I go to take it out of the water, it all landed against the side of the main root, but they'll reach out quite a bit of difference. It's almost like mycorrhizal fungi. Now, the difference is between these two is that this always is dying and reproducing itself towards a tip when it's growing down. Now, another fun fact about this is that this root hair here if there's another one growing here, this will produce also a chemical reaction to kill this one off, so there's distance between each one. And now the reason I'm also showing this too, you ever have transplants that wilt on you when you put them in the ground? Well, the reason is, is because just like what I did when I pulled the roots out or disturbed it, all these root hairs are leaning against the root again. They're not perfectly in the soil like they used to be. This used to go out straight out here and it was uninterrupted. And then here's a bacteria going by and all nutrients and then it would capture it and bring it back into the root via the acids. Now, when you move that too much or you go transplanting something, you're losing all those root hairs. That's why it goes into shock. And that's why it comes back because usually in a matter of time, these root hairs will, since they died off, will start reproducing themselves and then realigning themselves. And that's why your plant recovers. So here it is again, I'll get it into a focus and you can see much better of the quality of that root hair. What I'm trying to show here, and it's difficult because it's easy to break them when you move things around, and I'm not a skilled expert, but this is what they should look like. These are root hairs that I got off the internet, and this is just a picture. You can see when the seed first starts coming out. All those little hairs will start growing here. Now, every two to three weeks, these will die off. This root will elongate and grow deeper and go into the soil, but also, is that these will die off and then they'll only grow on the tip. They don't grow anywhere else. And so this brings in your nutrients and your water and feeds the root. So what I've learned is that brassicas or the ones that don't use mycorrhizal fungi, the 95% of the plants on this planet that use it, excrete a small amount of acid to bring in nutrients to feed the plant. So let's say this is a tomato plant. The tomato plant will only excrete small amounts of acid to bring back and feed the root. It is going to rely on the mycorrhizal fungi to host into the plant later on so it can collect more nutrients in the whole soil to feed the plant. Only the non-mycorrhizal plants are going to use those root hairs and excrete a large amount of acid and constantly do it all the time. It has developed that way. Nature has uh, set its standards in these group of plants only that can do this. You can never get a tomato plant to do that. That's why you have to have healthy soil for that mycorrhizal fungi to adapt into the root and grow in there as a host and then receive all the nutrients out of the soil. You can't do that in compost. You can only do that in real soil. So only when you have a living root in the ground and real soil, meaning sand, silt, and clay, that you can bring in those nutrients through mycorrhizal and feed the roots. Because if you don't, it's not going to work and your plants are not going to be healthy and you'll have disease problems. Now, when you grow a plant like a tomato plant in pure compost, you're not going to have mycorrhizal fungi in that soil. 
because the soil food web is not there. But you have so much nutrients in that compost that is flushing through all the time when you water it that those root hairs can pick it up. So what's the difference between compost and real soil? Compost is short term. It's only going to do it for a short period of time. Real soil, meaning sand, silt, and clay, and the whole soil food web, is going to deliver year after year after year while you have to replace compost all the time. Compost is only good for maybe a year or two because all those little micronutrients have flushed through. There's nothing holding them into the soil as much. I also would like to add is that you have to have healthy soil also. You should have mycorrhizal fungi in the soil. This plant might not use it, the kale or the brassica family might not use it, but you have to have healthy soil building aggregates all the time. And compost, you don't build aggregates, only in, in soil, the sand, something clay you do. So all the nutrients can run by the plant roots all the time and cycle things and can be eaten because in compost, it's strictly a flow through system meaning is that when it rains or anything else too, it's going to constantly come down. That's why you always have to put more compost on top so it drips through all the time, constantly going through, constantly running past the roots. And just like what you use is manure or fertilizer, you have to add it to the topsoil and go through. You always constantly have to add. In real soil, you don't have to add anything anymore. Once those nutrients start recycling and then all the microorganisms start moving around the soil, they die and then go past it again. So you can see how it's beneficial. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please write me and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much for watching today and please like and subscribe. Thanks.